Chemistry lecture number nine, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of significant figures. Before we can dive into this topic, we have to do a quick review of rounding numbers. So here we go with rounding. Suppose we want to round a set of numbers to three significant figures. Here's how we do it. If the digit to the immediate right of the last significant figure is less than five, do not change the last significant figure. So we want to round this number to three significant digits. So one, two, three. So we want to round to three significant digits. Here's the third digit. We look past the third digit. It's the number two. Two is less than five, so we're gonna round this to 2.73. All right, so if it's less than five, we just leave that one alone. If the digit to the immediate right of the last significant figure is greater than five, round up the last significant figure. So here we go again, three significant digits. This is the third digit that we might change. That's the number six. Six is greater than five, so we round that one up. 2.74. If the digit to the immediate right of the last significant figure is equal to five and followed by a non-zero digit, round up the last significant figure. All right, rounding to three digits. One, two, three. This is the digit we might change. It's not five, but it is five, one. Five, one is greater than five, so you would round up. That's why that rule's in place. So this is gonna be 2.74. Five, one is greater than five. Same thing here. Here's the digit we're interested in. The digit following it is 5002. Well, 5002 is greater than 5, so we're going to round that one up also. 2.74. So we know what to do when it's less than 5 or greater than 5 or something a smidgen greater than 5. If the digit to the immediate right of the last significant figure is equal to five and not followed by a non-zero digit, uh, look at the last significant figure. If it's an odd digit, round it up. If it's an even digit, do not round up. So we're rounding to three digits. Here's the third digit we might change. That number is five. All right, so it's right on the borderline. Three is an odd number, so since it's an odd number, we're gonna round up, 2.74. All right, same thing here, three significant digits. This time we have 2.76. So five is past the third digit, and this digit here is six, it's an even number. Six is an even number, so we leave it alone, 2.76. So if you're right at five, don't round up if it's an even number. If you're right at five, and if it's an odd number, then you round up. Half the time you're gonna be rounding up, half the time you won't be rounding. <clears throat> All right, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, suppose I want to measure the mass of some coins and I have two scales. Um, I put some of the coins on one scale and I put the rest of the coins on the other scale. And then I'm gonna measure the two quantities and add them together to get the total mass of the coins. So, I have one scale and the first scale can measure tiny quantities as small as 0.01 grams. So let me turn this on, let that warm up a bit. Yoink, all right, there we are. So this scale goes 0 0.00. So this can measure, well, one place past the decimal is 0.1 or 1 tenth. Two places past the decimal is a hundredth. So this can measure something as small as one hundredth of a gram. It can measure tenths of a gram, it can measure hundredths of a gram. Now the second scale can measure things only as small as one gram. So I'm gonna turn this scale on. And this scale is not as precise as uh, the other scale. If you look at it, see it says just as zero grams. It doesn't say zero point anything. So it can't measure 0 0.1, it can't measure 0 0.2. It can only measure things as small as one gram. So this scale is not as good. In any case, I'm gonna put uh, coins on both of these, record the masses, and then add it up. And we can see if we can get the total mass of our uh, coins. All right, so, and this is not correct. Let's just start over again. Here's our first scale. And on our first scale, we put the 
coins on. Eighteen. Oh, how about that? We do get eighteen point seven six. So, first scale is eighteen point seven six grams. Now it's sort of dancing around, but I'm just going to leave it at eighteen point seven six. All right, that's the first number I saw. It now it says eighteen point seven five. Well, okay, let's make it eighteen point seven five. Let's uh, do real world calculations. Eighteen point seven five on the first scale. Up oh, now it changed again. All right, well I'm just going to leave it at eighteen point seven five because I don't have all day. All right, now let's take the uh, second scale, the one that's not as good. Okay. And this is 44 grams. Now, can I write 44.00? No, I cannot. This scale cannot uh, measure tenths or hundredths of a gram. So this could be 44.01. It could be 44.05. It could be 44.99 for all I know. I just don't have any idea what these numbers are past here. In any case, if we were to add it together, the uh, raw answer is going to be 18.75 plus 44. I should probably do this in my head, but I'm getting lazy. All right, so I get 62.75. Now, that's I'm just going to call that the raw answer for, uh, for now. Okay, so we can't write our answer as uh, 62.75 grams. Um, the amount of mass on the second scale, it could be, I don't know, 44.00 grams, or it could be uh, 44.05 grams, or it could be uh, 44.86 grams for all I know. Uh, we just don't know what these last two digits are on this uh, particular scale. Oops. Should be 44, but anyway, we, can't, we don't know what the numbers are uh, past here. All right. So, uh, we have a little bit of a problem here. Since we have no idea what the last two digits past the decimal could be, uh, we can't write any digits past the decimal in the final answer. We'll have to round the answer to the smallest quantity that can be measured by our worst scale. So, our worst scale can only measure things as small as one gram, so we round to the ones digit. Now on the first scale, we measured it as 18.75 grams. And the second scale, when we last looked at it, it was uh, 44 grams. So 18.75 plus 44, once again, so this is going to give me 62.75 grams. And since we can only measure things as small as one gram, we have to round it to the ones place. All right, We can't round it to 0.8 we uh, have to round it to the ones place. That's the smallest amount we can measure. So this is going to be rounded to 63 grams. And that's what we can legitimately uh, write down as our measurement. So when you add or subtract significant figures, the answer must be rounded to the least number of places past the decimal. On our second scale, it didn't go any places past the decimal, so my answer cannot have any places past the decimal. And we have to round uh, appropriately. So let's try some... Uh, practice problems here. 5.34 plus 9.3 plus 6.12. The raw answer is 20.76. This one has two places past the decimal. This is one place past the decimal, and that's two places past the decimal. Our final answer can only be one place past the decimal. That's the fewest. So this is going to be uh, 20.8. Take a look at this one, similar to our coin example. 24 plus 18.4 if you add it together, that's the uh, raw, unrounded answer. This is one place past the decimal. This is no places past the decimal. So our final answer can be no places past the decimal. That's what we have to write, 42. Subtraction, 7.524 divided by 4.31. There's our raw answer. This is three places past the decimal. That's two places past the decimal. Our final answer can only be two places past the decimal. So this is going to be 3.21. And then for this, these powers of 10 are different. So we have to uh, change things a little bit. I'm just going to rewrite this. 13.5 times 10 to the eighth 
plus. And so let's make this to a power of 8 also. If I move this this way, uh, this turns to 10 to the 8. So if I move the decimal over here like that, this is going to be 2.43 times 10 to the 8th. All right, so if we were to add these, we would get 15.93 times 10 to the 8th. This number is one place past the decimal. This is two places past the decimal. So we're going to round it, and we're going to make it 15.9 times 10 to the eighth. Okay, and I suppose if we really wanted to make it accurate, we'd make this 1.59 uh, times 10 to the ninth. Okay. That's addition and uh, subtraction. What if you multiply or divide? Well, when multiplying or dividing, the number of significant figures in the answer cannot exceed the fewest number of significant figures in the problem. So, let's say we're figuring out the density of something. Uh, 49.6000 divided by 47.40 gives you that big number on your calculator. This number has seven uh, significant figures, and this has one, two, three, four significant figures. So our final answer can only have four significant figures, so we can only go out to here. So our final answer then is going to be 1.046 grams per milliliter. Only four significant digits, because we have four significant digits there. The fewest number of significant digits. If you multiply, let's say we know how long something's moving and how fast it's moving, so we multiply time times velocity. This is the big number you would get on your calculator. This has three significant figures, and this one has seven significant figures. So our final answer can only have three significant figures. We can only go as far out to here. So this is going to get rounded to uh, 57.9 uh, meters. All right, in our final example, uh, this one has four significant figures, and then this one has three significant figures. If you multiply these two numbers, that's the answer you would get on your calculator. Let's convert this to scientific notation. We'll make this 7.08. 75 times 10 to the negative 2. And so we can only have three significant figures here. So this is going to get rounded to 7.09 times 10 to the negative 2 square feet. All right. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This is chemistry lecture number nine, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, division of significant figures.